Hi everyone, welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another organizing video, yes, on our channel. Now, if you like organizing as much as I do, as we all do, because we like to organize our stuff, yes, and it helps you see what you have. But if you like those type of videos, you can always hop on our playlist, which is called Rearrange the Stuff, and you'll see a ton of organizing videos, and I will have that link below. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is ribbon, floss, and thread, and oh my, yes, all of it. All the fun, pretty stuff. Of course, anything that has color is pretty, in my opinion. Okay, so I had gotten a few questions how I do this and how I do that, and so, you know me, I have a little bit of everything in my space because that's how things keep excited that's how I keep things excited because I don't do everything one way and you know if I build kits or if I'm traveling or if I want to do batch scrapbooking which we're going to talk about that coming up in a few months batch scrapbooking okay see I'm getting sidetracked already oh okay so let's get to the point at hand the point at hand is ribbon floss and thread basically trimmings okay any type of pretty thing that you want to add some color now at one time ribbon was the thing for uh, work putting them on your scrapbook layouts and cards and things and guess what got re what replaced that washi <laughs> and I'll talk about washi in just a minute because you can absolutely put washi in with this type of embellishment slash trimming if you wish to okay so we're going to talk about that okay so I wanted to say wanted to say wanted to show a couple things right off the bat is that if you have some of these bigger cones and these bigger bigger bundles you can absolutely leave as leave them as they are use them as a decorative element in your space put them in a pretty bin basket or just put them on your shelf i have these th these three right here and i use these every week when it comes to either scrapbooking crafting card making or mail yes and just tie things together <laughs> yes so I use these and I will tell you there is absolutely nothing wrong with buying a cone of red baker's twine and using it in your life yes makes me happy I've had this for years and I still have a ton left okay now here's a quick little tip if you're looking for baker's twine and someone remind me I will try to link it below but you want to know one of the best places to get baker's twine Yes, at a place that actually sells baking supplies, cooking supplies, coffee supplies, that type of thing, because they're cheaper. Because if you put them in the scrapbook section, you already know they're going up three or four dollars. But I got this from a a place that was uh, they sold uh, supplies for baking and cooking and things like that. So yeah, coffee things like that. So that's where you can find. <laughs> some really nice baker's twine yes don't look in the scrapbook section look in the cooking section why that is you know you put scrapbook or crafting on it the price gets increased okay i went on a tangent sorry about that but yes you can don't uh don't overlook unusual places for supplies for your scrapbooking and crafting okay so simply one quick fix just leave them as they are in these cones and these bundles and I will show you what it looks like if you take one of these off the bundle. I did that a few times. I wouldn't suggest that, but I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, learn from my mistake. Okay, so yes, these three I have laying out on my shelf. They're pretty. I like looking at them, and I use them every single week. Yes, love it, love it, love it. Okay, what else can you do? Simply, a quick fix is if you have ribbon, floss, or thread, or all three, or baker's twine, what you can do, put some in some pretty bowls. Absolutely. I mean, you just love looking at the color. And then also, too, if something is on your desk, you're more apt to use it because you don't have to get off your seat. You know, I'm a big proponent of that. Yes. And so... I would say if you have something new that come into your room, whether it's trimmings or anything, put them in a bowl, put them have prime real estate on your desk because the fact that they're new, that's the exciting part and you want to play with it. So if you have something small, put it in a bowl. Now I do suggest, and I ran into this one time, do not have seven or eight bowls laying around your desk and your work surface because I found that it hindered my process and then I had to keep cleaning these all the time. I don't want to clean, I want to scrap, okay? So I would just have one two uh, three would be the max that I would say bowls because you can get too many of these things you can and then you're working in this little eight by eight space you know what I'm talking about so it's about keeping this work area free but there's nothing wrong with having a couple bowls and there's a gnat <sighs> so tired of rain I'm trying not to complain but I will tell you I have had enough rain I've had enough sinus issues and to choke a horse I'm, I'm tired yeah, I'm getting a little irritable. 
I need the sunshine, baby. Sunshine. Some of you gals from Florida, please pipe it up here. I need some sunshine. Feeds my soul. Okay, what was I saying? Pretty bowls. Nothing wrong with putting some floss thread and twine in a pretty bowl and using it that way. Because, you know, it's out in the bag. Okay? And then also, too, don't forget, it don't have to be in a bowl. It can be in a tin or a basket. Anything. Yes. We're going to talk about those coming up. Okay. So let me find a safe little place for those. I don't want them to go be bopping anywhere. No. Okay. So what else can you do? Well, you know, in my space, I have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But I wanted to show how I have some ribbon. Okay. Now, I have ribbon in a photo box. And, of course, it's marked ribbon on my photo box. Easy access, easy to store. And, you know, with anything I've been talking about with organizing, that is honestly what you have to keep in mind. How do you want to reference it? How do you want to access it? How can you store it? Not everybody has a big space. Not everybody has a small space. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. And then also, too, if you're someone who scraps away from your desk you have to always keep that in the back of your mind portability portability okay and for me it has to be affordable i'm not going to spend a hundred dollars looking for an organizing container no okay so this is marked ribbon so la 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 Oh, I wanted to say something. I showed this in another video. Do you know that when you out open an anything apple and you know you pull up the lid just like this and you know there it has a very tight fit and it comes up very slowly. Do you know that is a marketing object that they absolutely created for that effect because they wanted you to have that suspense and that excitement of opening your apple products yes honest to goodness that's the truth i did learn that yes so they keep that building the building and the suspense of opening your apple product with that lid the way they configured that i thought that was interesting but i like marketing okay so ribbon what do we have I simply have it in baggies, again, in my rainbow system. It cannot get any easier and cheaper than this. Baggy in a photo box, okay? And that's why I use it, okay? And also, too, when you're organizing, I said this in another video, when you're organizing, you want to stay away from round containers. You want to go with square, rectangle containers because they stack better and they configure better on your shelves and in your units. Okay, so I just have ribbon and there I have white and ivory together and you see I have all different types of ribbon and trimmings and of course I showed this in another video that if you need to separate a certain color or a certain category to fit your style that's exactly what you need to do okay and so I have light pink and dark pink because I would want them separated and then I went down in the rest of my rainbow system okay it just doesn't get any easier love this okay now this is ribbon Okay, now I'm going to show you that I do have a lot of ribbon, and actually I have purged a lot of ribbon through the years, but my mom and my grandmother were seamstress by trade, and so of course buttons and ribbon and thread is something that's always been a part of my life since I was just a wee little one, so I have a lot of it because I've been gifted a lot, okay? So with, this is marked floss slash thread. Again, we have that apple. Yes, the apple. <laughs> the apple opening. Okay. okay. Now, with this one, I had showed this in another video, too. I think it was when we were organizing mini inks, if that was a product I had. I wanted to show that if you use something together, keep it together, and this is no exception. So you see how I have in my floss and my thread, I have a few of these Amy Tangerine uh, stitching little mats, and I keep that, uh, the piercing tool, and then I have some extra supplies. I keep them all together. Why not? I'm going to use it in this box, right? Keep everything together. You know, Tiffany Spalding, and I will have her video linked below and then also too with Tiffany I'll have linked below she has new organizing videos and challenges coming up so I will list that below it costs nothing it's absolutely free but you do want to sign up so you can get the emails I'll have that linked below I and you know some of it I I don't need to do but I love to hear other people organizing and it keeps me busy when I'm in my scrap space okay so what I have in these bags again by the rainbow color okay simply I have my pink and go down to my turquoise, my black and all that. And so what I have in here, I have floss, my embroidery floss, cross stitch floss, whatever you want to call that, and thread. Okay, I have them all in one bag. Okay, now if you didn't have a lot, you could put your ribbon, your floss, your thread, your twine all in one container and do it by color. Okay, so you see how I have it by color, but then I also have it by category product type. Yes, because of the amount I have. Okay, now I will show you another way that I have some. And these, you see how when you have things on a roll, it takes up space. But I'll show you something in just a minute. But there's, there's a downfall. 
there's a downfall to that. So I'll show that in just a moment. Okay. So that is my floss and my thread. Again, by color, but in and of itself, it's by a separate category. Okay. So then what else do I have? Well, let me pull out another photo box. <laughs> You know, I love them, love them, love them, love them. You can get this product, this container for $5 and sometimes less than $3. Yes, if you're looking for sales. So in my orange color box, which is labeled orange, you have to label these because you, you won't know what's in them. I have ribbon and lace and thread and twine. Oh my, yes. Now, do I have any business buying any twine? Look at that. Now, some of this came from group buys. Some of it was gifted to me. Some of it was gifts, some I bought on my own and some I learned that I didn't like. Lawn Fawn Twine, I do not like, no. And I have thought about purging that, but then I have some projects coming up and I will use that in gift giving and things like that, that, you know, you don't feel bad about using your supplies. No, so, and there's thread. Now let me talk about thread for just one minute. If you're someone who uses thread with your sew machine, then by all means keep your thread by your sew machine, okay? Don't intermingle it with everything else because then you'd have to get out that container when you're going to use it. Now for me, when I'm using a thread, it's for stitching and I don't really always use it with my sew machine. I use it more for hand stitching and things like that. So I, I encompass it with my other tr trimmings. But if you are someone who uses your thread primarily with your sew machine, that's how you should organize it, okay? However you want to do it. Now, with these photo boxes, what I wanted to say is I love this size. It's portable, okay? I could travel with it if I needed to, and I have before, yes. And also, too, it's telling me and my brain this is the allotted space that I have, and you have no business buying anything else. And this is full. Okay, because I actually took out a couple items. This orange is full. And once I decided years ago to go to these color boxes, it was a huge slap in the face that I had way more product than I thought I did. Okay, because not all of my product, because I don't even have flowers in here. I don't even have my all of my ribbon in here, all my floss, all my thread. I have some other things in separate photo boxes because, once again, of the amount I have. Okay, now I've been scrapbooking for 23 years, so of course I'm going to have a, new, you know, a nice inventory amount of things. But yes I have really slowed my roll over the last couple years and in the past year I've really really slowed the roll of when it came to buying things okay so let's talk about something else let's talk about if you were to take something off the roll before I forget that so I had this idea one time because I had several of these and I use these and God love my husband. Every time he'll see these around the holidays, he picks these up for me in the tool store because he knows I use them for cards and packages and things like that. And so I decided what I was going to do at one time because I wanted to store these in a better manner. I'm always looking how I can store things better. So I decided I was going to take some of these off the rolls and I was going to put them around pencils. Huh? Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. We don't have any more. Yes. Okay. That's a closed pin. And this is just a loose bundle. Okay. So it does save space because right there, that would be three of these. Okay. So it does save space. It takes some time and they do store better in a photo box than this. Okay. But in this is a clothes pin. A lot of people do with the clothes pins, you know, the wooden clothes pins. And this is just a bundle I probably should do something with. So when you're doing something like this and you want to save space, because look how much of that empty space. Yeah, that's, on, that's wasted space in your organizing container. You can simply wrap things around a pencil, a clothes pin, and you can also use these type of embroidery floss empty bobbins. You can do that, okay? Just be prepared. It takes time. You know, I find it relaxing in front of a movie, but, you know, nothing wrong with using some pencils. No, I wouldn't do that with all of these, but... At one time, I did save some space by doing that. Absolutely. Okay. So then what else did I want to say? Okay, let's talk about these little things for a minute. Say we're going to organize some ribbon. Okay. And you see how I have, I have these black ponytail. You have to forgive me. I have a headache again today. Oh, yes. Okay. So. And when I have a headache, I go do something to not think about my headache. I wanted to show these ponytail holders because there's a couple things I've learned over the last few years using these ponytail holders. And I will say, do not use clear. See how the black pops up and you just know where to go. So it's just one of those quick tips. Don't use the clear, use the black. And I have a bag here. And I just keep them in sandwich bags. Some of these ponytail holders that came from Dollar Tree. 
a dollar. Can't beat that. Now they are cheap in quality, even though they're cheap in price. But recently, I was at Walmart floating around in the toiletry section, and they had these ponytail, and they were 98 cents for 300 count. And I thought, wow, these look like a better quality. Seriously better quality. I wish I would have picked up another box, okay? Because I'm going to throw those away. I don't know if you can see that, but that is such a much better quality. I mean, and it's two cents cheaper than the Dollar Tree. <laughs> yes, sometimes that happens at Walmart. Okay, so I'm going to take off this clear, and you're going to see how much better this pops. Something as simple as just changing, just changing out these ponytail holders, yeah. Okay, now would I go and change all these? No, but I will tell you what happens is that these things break so easily, and when they break, I'll just put on these Walmart ones. Yes, look how much better that shows up. Yes, it's just one of those things that helps. Yeah, it really does help. Okay, so let's talk about if you wanted to take some things off the spool. Okay, so I have a little tin here of some more. And I just pulled these things out for some props, okay? But I mainly have all my ribbon in those photo boxes, and I have one more way. Okay, so say you want to take it off the spool or you don't want to take it off the spool, it's totally up to you. It does take a little bit of time to take things off the spool. I find it very relaxing, and then you can organize them in a better manner because you're going to have less space. Okay, this is four versus four. Okay, you can see, yeah, less space. Okay, when you take things off the roll. Okay, of course. Now these are small rolls, you can see. So they're not going to take up that much space. So what you can do is you can rip off some of the packaging. Okay, I'll tell you, there's that gnat again. Oh my goodness. Mm. Does anyone else get irritated when you see a bug flying around? Oh man, yes. Okay, so what you can do is just rip off the packaging. Okay, and you can simply organize them where you just rip off some of the packaging, but you're still leaving them on the roll. And you can just put two of those ponytail holders on there. And so then you did a quick fix, but yet you don't have to deal with all the packaging, if that makes sense, okay? So that's one way to do that. And then also too, you can wrap things around cardboard if you do not like this loose type of organizing your ribbon or your twine, things like that. You can just use pieces of cardstock, you know, heavy duty cardstock or cardboard and wrap them around. So there is no wrong way, just like everything else, there's no wrong way to do it. It's however you want to do it. And again, I would, if you're thinking about your ribbon and your floss and your thread, you know, and of course, fall is coming up, Christmas is coming up. This is the type of product we use more at the end of the year than the beginning of the year. Yes. Do you find that to be true for you? I definitely find that to be true for me because, you know, we're doing packages and, you know, we're getting into more other different types of crafts and, and that type of season. Okay. So another way. Oh, there's that gnat. I really don't want to do this video over, but I may because I, I don't want to see a gnat. No. But you know, we do live near woods, so that is part of nature. You embrace it. I don't have to like it, but I embrace it. Okay, what else I wanted to show? I want to show another way that you can organize. Let me move some of this beautiful lovelies here. Oh, what was I saying? You can definitely organize by color or by just do your ribbon in one pile, you know, one box, one container. You can do your floss, your twine, your ribbon, or you can marry it all in together and do it by color. Or you don't even have to do it by color. There's no wrong way. Okay, so I wanted to show another way is that you also can put them in jars, okay? Now, I use this as a decorative element in my space. And I just have these uh, bundles, again, with these ponytail holders. And then when you're doing anything with a jar... Okay. Now these are antique jars. So yeah, they're, they're pretty, but you know, they have some character to them is that you want to reach your hand into things. Okay. You want to make sure now these are big, they call them cracker jars. Okay. Cause that's how they used to keep crackers back in the day. Okay. So I not only have one, but two, <laughs> but three of these jars. Yes. I don't know if you can even see them all. I have three of these jars. Okay. Now these are glass jars, so I have to be a little careful, but these again serve as a decorative element in my space. And also too, I do use these and also because the amount I have, and then also too, because my mom and some of these items, if you can see, let me put these other ones away. Okay. And this is something you want to think about in your space 
if you have a family member that has gifted you things that were theirs, was theirs, you know, and then it was of your grandmother, your great grandmother, use it as a decorative element or best of all, use it on your projects, okay? So if you can see these cardboard rick racks, some of these were my mom and some of these were my grandmother's. And I actually have another container where I have actual packaging. And so when I do a layout about my grandmother, I'm going to use the actual packaging of this rick rack on her layouts. Yeah, so that's a one, you know, it's like a hair heritage piece almost you know uh, there's my mom and my grandmother because they're both seamstress by trade so embrace uh what your family members give you and what they use okay so i'm trying to think if there's anything else i wanted to talk about when it comes to ribbon floss and thread i will tell you that once you start gathering them all up and I'm someone I haven't even bought any for a while. I still find it in kits and things like that. You just don't realize how much you have until it's all in one place, okay? And again, this is one of those categories. It's not a one, one size fits all because the amount that we have and also to the different types. There's ribbon, okay? Then there's lace ribbon, then there's crocheted, you know, and then we have, now we have the metallics, and then we, now we have the fringe and the pom-poms, okay? And then, of course, the velvet, okay? So there's different types of ribbon, different types of trimming, and then you get into twine, you get into floss, Yes. So there's no one size fits all. You can do the bowls, you can do the baggage, you can do the baskets, you could do the bins, or you can get some pretty jars. They have these type of cracker jars at Walmart. They absolutely do. Okay. And you can just go into the section where, you know, they have dishes and things and they have these beautiful jars. Okay. Yes. And they're very affordable for glass jars. Okay. That again, serves as a decorative element something pretty now i'm not someone i like a, i don't like to see a lot of color so i basically only have one or two shelves in my entire space where i see supplies because color makes my my mind very hyper <laughs> go figure okay so i think that's all oh one more thing sorry you can absolutely put ribbon in this category ribbon sorry told you i have a headache you can absolutely put washi in this category and you can treat it as such you can treat it as a trimming it's all in how you perceive it and how you want to reference it okay for us for me washi is washi it's a whole different beast because of the amount that i have okay but if you're someone who has a little you can definitely treat washi as a ribbon floss thread twine trimming absolutely and then if you put it all together, <laughs> you kind of seem to get creative with it, I think. So if you're someone who just has a little bit of washi, I say go ahead and throw it into this category. Organize it right with it. Okay, so I think that's all we have for our floss and our ribbon and our thread. And if you have a particular way that you do yours and it's working for you and it's affordable, please share with us because we can all learn. I love seeing how other people do things because you just never know what's going to spark an idea for you in your space. Okay, so that is what I have for organizing our ribbon floss twine thread and even a little bit of washi okay so come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna learn bye, bye.